Why does Germany have so many different names? Alemannia, Niemce, Upudage, Togel. Oh, and Deutschland. Most countries only have one name, like Togo, arbitrarily named after a lake within its arbitrarily drawn European colonial borders, or Cameroon, named for shrimp. When these countries decolonized, every language just used their official names. Germany has only been a unified nation-state since 1871, but European languages already had many names for the 2,000 years older concept of Germany. Deutschland means land of the Deutsch, and Deutsch comes from Proto-Germanic Thuthiskas, meaning that Germans are just one of many peoples who call themselves the people. This root gave us the Italian and Scandinavian words for Germans, as well as the Latin Teutonic. It's also the source for Dutch, which English once used for most people in the Holy Roman Empire, but now only for the nearby Netherlanders. The Empire is the number one source of the confusion. Although German, the Empire insisted it was Roman for a thousand years. Deutsch was not used officially, much, but it was the people's choice, and prevailed as the German national identity gradually formed. Most East Asian languages listened, and adopted words that sound like Deutsch when Germans arrived in the region on other European country ships. Other languages went their own way. The people called foreigners the foreigners, and some returned the favor. Many Slavic languages and Hungarian used the root Nemtz, people who talk wrong, and Nimsa also became the Arabic word for Austria, the closest and most powerful German state during Ottoman times. When Germans left Europe as immigrants and imperialists, other peoples also commented on their speech and appearance. The Native American language Lakota calls Germans Iyashicha, bad speakers. They looked like English-speaking white Americans, but didn't speak English. In Africa, Kinyarwanda speakers named Germans with the root Dage. Cheyenne, also in North America, uses Maevehoe, the red white people. Other words for Germany originally applied to individual Germanic tribes. The Alemanni, whose name either meant all people or foreign people, gave their name to languages like French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Arabic because the Alemanni and their descendants lived the closest when those languages were formalized. Aleman used to be the dominant word for Germans in English, too, used in Shakespeare, Baroque music, and square dance. But German won out when it became fashionable to do as the Romans had done. German itself may have been a Celtic word for a specific tribe, the neighbors, or maybe the noisy people. And Germania became the official Roman name. Roman names sounded classy to later Latin literate European intellectuals, so Germany started displacing older names in places like England and Russia. Other tribes' names spread in different directions. Finnish and Estonian named Germany after the Hanseatic Saxon amber traders of the Baltic Sea, Latvian and Lithuanian after an unknown tribe, Medieval Greek after the Franks, so Germany shared a name with France, Medieval Hebrew after a grandson of Noah in the biblical genealogies, Tahitian after the Prussians, and Navajo after the helmets worn by the German army during World War II, when code talkers developed the term while serving the United States. As a country, only China has as many names being an ancient concept, important, and disunified when Europeans named it. Basically, a lot of peoples have different names, but not too many countries. Germany has lots of names because 17th century Germans didn't have a unified country with an official name, so Europeans spread its old ethnic names around the world. In an alternate history where Africa colonized Europe, like in Nikolai Sion's El Kebulan map, it might have been the lands of the Germans that got divided into random straight-line countries. Maybe one named after the Wolof word for herring. Thanks for watching! There are more videos in the cards, and in the future. So please let me know in the comments below a word person or place whose roots I should trace.